You can get out of the road. Yeah, absolutely, yeah, because uh, let's face it, half the people haven't seen you. Yeah, exactly, half of them haven't seen you. And at the end of the day, you're the one that gets hurt, not them, so you might as well be aware of what's going on. Now it's time for Pete to put all that experience to the test. He's standing to go quite quickly now. Yeah, yes, is he? I can see it. He's not standing still yeah, now, is he? No. I think he may have done this before. His brake's on there. Yes, Looks he like he overbraked. <laughs> He does uh, seem to be having a bit of twitch yep, there, though. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, Pete, clearly in a, in a different class there, I think, to the other guys there around Manfield, looking pretty good. A um, little bit of twitch in that front yep. end. I wonder if that's just getting used to the new bike and going from, um, you know, reasonably... Well, sitting upright, leaning forward, uh, you know, without... As you said earlier, we've talked about warming up, and that's part of the warming up, getting used to the dynamics of the bike. Mm, yeah. Every bike is dynamically different. And he's, he's gone there to sits pop front, front calipers with 332 yeah. mil discs, you know, yeah. huge stopping mm, power. Mm, he's mm. had something that's had probably a reasonably casual attitude to stopping. Um, yeah. So that, that probably explains that twitch. Obviously, Pete's experience on the track impressed the judges. After a few more laps with all three of the riders, Aaron and the boys have a quick chat about some of the finer points of track riding. So awesome day out here at Manfield, like just amazing. <laughs> and Dan, you had a question before about something. Yeah, just um, any more information you can tell us about like counter steering? Just... Counter steering is, is really funny. Everybody talks about you know turning opposite to turn in to do all this sort of stuff. Um, for me, when you race a bike, when you turn into a corner, you turn right to go right. Um, so I think the counter steering is a little bit of a myth, but when you get going faster, it comes into play, but you don't actually physically do it, or you don't mentally do it, it just happens without really realising, you slide your bum off the seat and your arms get a bit shorter or longer and that's counter steering but to go down the road and actually physically practice it I think it's a bit of a myth. That's interesting. It yeah is. I'd probably respectfully dis disagree there although I, I agree that um, it becomes a subconscious rather than a conscious thing but but to consciously understand what you're doing and why it's doing it I think it's important. Yes I, do, I, th I think so also and it's not something that uh, the average rider should totally disregard. I mean, the type of riding and the, the way Aaron rides on the racetrack and perhaps even on the road where he's shifting his seat backwards and forwards because he's doing a lean-in type of uh, cornering technique, the average rider will either stay with the bike as a lean-with or otherwise they're going to be doing a counter-steering. I found, uh, even though we're on a racetrack, Aaron, there's still a little bit of loose stuff and, and things lying around. It's a bit like, I suppose, street riding. Yeah, I think we may mention that when we're riding around. You know, it's a bit like the road. You're just always looking for a bit of an exit. If someone pulls out in front of you, you want an escape plan. Uh, you want to be able to stand the bike up and shoot off into the grass if you have to. A um, bit like on the racetrack, you go out there and have a good look around. You know, it's been a while since you've been on the track. Someone else has ridden around and someone else has fallen off and there could be bits and pieces everywhere like we found today. The road is, is very similar. You, you might ride a, a particular road every day and then uh, one day there's suddenly roadworks and gravel all over the road. Exactly, yeah. I mean, that's the thing about the, the racetrack that I find so gratifying is that once you've done three laps, you know it's going to be the same. You know, you can go around, 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 and you know what's coming. It frees up a lot of your concentration to work on basic riding, I guess. Yeah, especially with the cornering, eh? Just making sure you break in before you actually hit the corner rather than breaking late and then hitting the corner straight away. Yeah, well, I break a corner down into three steps. You know, it's entry, middle corner, and exit. So you're coming down hard on the brakes, and you have the most brake pressure at that, that point. And from there, you're always looking at letting the brake pressure off. You're looking at the apex then, clipping the apex, and as you get to the apex, the brakes off, you're cracking the throttle, and then you're looking for the exit. And you're just rolling that throttle on, out, exiting. So that's why I break it down in three, three simple steps, you know, entry, middle, and exit, because um, there's always room to work with there. Are we going to make Dan into a super bike rider? What do you reckon? Come on, guys. Yep. yep. Needs a yep. Honesty. Bike yep. uh, we'll be trying really hard, yeah. and you have to get a bigger bike than I think, Dan. Well, I can see one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I'll be keeping it for a little while longer. <laughs> so now, the moment of truth. Which of our three riders, Dan, Jamie or Pete, have impressed the judges enough to award him this great selection of new riding gear? We've got a pretty nice prize of a whole selection of brand new riding gear to give out. The question is, who do we give it to? That's interesting, isn't it? I mean, you look at these guys, very different 
uh, stages of their riding careers. You've got Pete with over 30 years, you've got Jamie with 20 odd years, and you've got Dan right at the very start. And of course, that makes it very hard to decide where they should fit. I mean, Dan's taking all this on board, and you can see that. Um, Jamie's, yeah, he's, he's looking and he's listening, but I don't really see too much action. Mm. And Pete, Pete's taking it all in because he wants to learn a little bit more, but at the end of the day, there's no real quantum leap for him, is it? Dan has actually, in my mind, uh, come forward in leaps and bounds mm. and has a real good attitude in wanting to learn and pick up as much as he can. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. You know, if I, if I was giving an award for the best road craft and the best riding technique, I'd tend towards Pete. In terms of awareness, perhaps, of, of one's own limitations or weaknesses, I might go Jamie. Um, but, you know, it's, it's, as you say, Dan is at the start of his journey and, and potentially um, is, is the person that we want to encourage to stay a motorcyclist. And stay alive. Yep. So, should we choose Dan as the recipient of the prize, do you think? Dan the man. Oh, Dan the man. Yep. All right. Dan's got it. Let's hope he yep. stays upright and stays in the... Definitely stay uh, safe. Well, here he is, Dan the man, the guy the judges thought got the most out of the past three days and all those challenges. Do you think you got much out of it? What do you think? Definitely, yeah. Over the last three days, I, got, I learned how to master my cornering, watching other people on the road and how I position myself. Not only that, um, other people's riding positions and how they ride on the road. Um, I think all of this helped um, get my full licence. So would you say your riding's safer now? Yeah, it is safer, but you've always got to watch out for that, you know, danger zone there. Keep your, keep your hazards always in your eyes and just follow your, your mark properly. Congratulations, Dan. Safe riding. So, after putting our three riders to the test, it's pretty easy to see that no matter how experienced you are, how much time you've driven out on the roads, there's always something new to learn about riding safer out there. Whether it's looking through a corner, watching out for hazards, or even as simple as warming up on the bike before you hit the streets. If you're after a bit more practice, you can always put some time in on the track, or maybe think about enrolling in a motorcycle riding school to hone up on some of those skills. Whatever you do, keep safe out there and make sure you ride forever. If you'd like any more information about the points in this video, plus a host of information about the motorcycling community in New Zealand, check out the Ride Forever website at www.rideforever.co.nz.